So let's get going. So first, let's get into what is full system. So as we talked earlier, full system simulation will simulate like an entire computer system going from like memory, CPU, I/O devices, as well as like applications or softwares on top of it, like operating systems or any other benchmark that like you would like to run on it. So, so if we want to boot like a full system on Gem Five, we we have to set up the following thing. So, like obviously we need to start by choosing the ISA that we want to run it on. So and then configure like a board like we have been doing, like choose what memory we want, choose what CPU or processor we want. And then we need the resources. So we need like kernel and disk image or a bootloader if we need, if we need to use that for let's say an ARM or a RISC-V full system simulation. And then any other parameters that you would like to adjust, like if you want to add like a new kernel parameter, like or a specific kernel parameter that you are using in your like own specified disk image. So you can add that here, and then we can run the simulation. So let's run the let's run a full system simulation. So we'll use the Ubuntu 24.04 with systemd resource on Gem5 resources. So one thing to note is this uh, this disk image also throws like three exit events, like three M5 exits uh, during its boot cycle, one when kernel is booted, one when the afterboot.sh script is run. That script is run after systemd is initialized and like everything is set up, and one after your run script is run. So for this disk image, you can specify if you want to run like a script on it or like some command on the terminal, and after that is run, another exit event will be thrown. So let's grab the resource. So we are going to use this resource. Um, so let's move to the file in 0 to using gem5, 0 07 full system, max86 fs kvm run.py. So uh, for this system, the board is already preset. It uses a simple processor. Um, so here we need to get our resource. So first, let's get the workload that we want. So we want this ID. And then we can set the workload to the board. Now let's make our own, like our exit event handler, because we do throw three M5 exits. So um, as we can see here, so this exit handler just, like, because we know we are throwing three M5 exits and where, we just print the statement of the current state where the boot is, and then just yield false for the first two and then true at the end. And then we uh, like, set the like set the board in the simulator object and then overwrite the exit event handler. So with this, we can um, run the full system simulation. One thing to note is that I'm using uh, KVM for this so that we can speed up the process of boot and we don't have to wait a long time for the actual system to boot. 
uh, we'll know more about KVM, I guess, in the next section after this one. So let's uh, run the script. So gem five, and then we run x86 fs kvm dot pi. I didn't save the file. That's what happened. So here the simulation is running. But what if we want to actually look at the terminal or have access to the terminal or see what's going on? So for that, we can use like the M5 term utility, which is present in uh, gem5. Um, yeah, so gem5 util term. So this allows us to access uh, like the terminal of the ongoing simulation. So let's set that up as well. And then we can rerun the simulation and see what's going on in the terminal. So I'm going to cd to gem5 util term. And we need to make the m5 term binary. So we can just run make. And now we have the m5 term binary. So to run, to get the terminal access, we need to first figure out what port the simulation is running to. So here, as we see, the first exit event is triggered, and, uh, and the run is finished. So we see the second and the third event. So now let's run it again, but this time, let's see what's going on in the terminal. So here on the output, as we can see here, we get board.pc.com one device listening for connections at port 3456. So we can use this port to connect to the terminal. So we just type M5 term 3456, oh, dot slash. And here we can see the terminal off our simulation. So here, as soon as the system D was booted, we logged into our user, and the exits, yeah, so we exited. Another way, if you want the entire terminal output while not, uh, not wanting to interact with it, we, we also have this available in M5 out. So if we see the M5 out directory in board.pc.com one device, here, you can see the entire output from the entire boot output, like the kernel output with system D and everything. This is a pretty long file, but yeah. So that's how we would run like a full system boot uh, workload in Gem5. Um, any questions? Okay. Um, so let's move on. So let's transition to how we can create our own disk images. So for this one, we just ran like a generic disk image that just like boots Ubuntu. It doesn't have any benchmarks on it. So first, let's see how we can um, create, a, a create a disk image. And then after that, we'll see how we can extend uh, like our base disk image to add like a benchmark on it and then run that benchmark in gem5. So for making the disk image, we use uh, Packer to automate the creation process of the disk image. QEMU, basically we use Packer's QEMU plugin to actually make the disk image. So the disk image is made using QEMU. And to help automating the installation of Ubuntu, we use Ubuntu auto install when we make the disk image. So let's look at the source for the disk image that is available in Gem5 resources. So if we go to our code spaces in Gem5 resources, source, 
x86 Ubuntu. Here are all the files that we need. So let's go through the important parts of this and see how we can build the image. So first thing we need is we need our ISO. So we need a live server installer ISO. So for this one, we can find it on like Ubuntu's website. So the one that we are using here for Ubuntu 24.04 is the Ubuntu 24.04 live server AMD ISO. So to find that, we can just uh, we can just search online. It will be on Ubuntu's website. And you can get the server installed from here. This is the link, basically, that I'm uh, that we used to make this disk image to install Ubuntu. So, other than that, you also need the user data file to actually tell Ubuntu how, like, tell Ubuntu how auto install would work and what you need to configure the system to. So that can be found in the HTTP directory under the user data section. So this you would need to get to use Ubuntu. You need to get this file to use Ubuntu auto install. So how do we get this user data file? So if you have a machine on which you would like, which on which you can manually install Ubuntu on, you or you have a machine. Uh, which you want to use its configuration for, you can retrieve it uh, from the path like slash uh, var slash log slash installer slash auto install user data. On a fresh install of Ubuntu after the first reboot, this file becomes available. So you can directly use this file from an auto, like from a system on which Ubuntu is installed. But what if we don't want to install it on like a actual machine? We can use uh, QEMU to actually get this user data file. So for that, we would actually need to create like a base disk image in QEMU to and manually install Ubuntu on it to get the file. So for that, first we need to create an empty uh, disk image. So let's just create a five gigabyte disk image. Yeah. So. The entire process would be basically create a disk image, open it in QEMU, manually install Ubuntu, and once it's installed, you can grab it, grab the file via SSH from the path uh, that I talked about in the last slide. So after we have that, let's now go over the Packer file and how it will actually create, how, it, how it, it's actually going to create the disk image for us. So the important parts of this Packer file would be, first would be the boot command. So basically what this boot command does is when the grub screen opens on the first like boot, it will go into the command and then add it, like it'll go to the last line, remove the last three slashes, like last three dash, dashes, and add our auto install command there. This is all this boot command does and then it will tell like boot with this auto install configuration. Another thing is the HTTP directory. This will point to the directory in which our user data and the metadata files are. Metadata is just an empty file. There is nothing in it. Um, so this will tell from where to get our uh, auto-install configuration from. Another thing, important thing is QEMU args. So these are the args you would need to specify. These are the args that will tell Packer to add to QEMU to boot QEMU up with. So in our case, because we are using KVM to build the disk image, we just need to say that use the host CPU and other configurations related to it, and then no display. But we can edit, uh, edit these. So if we have these QEMU Rs, the main QEMU command that Packer will write is the following one. Here are all, this is the exact command that Packer uses apart from the path to the actual image. And the last thing 
is the are these provisioners. So this file provisioners will tell what files to transfer from your host machine to the disk image. So here we are like transferring our init files, our after boot file, and the shell provisioner will tell what command or what script to run in the shell. So this will type out the shell command uh, command on the shell after the installation is done and when SSH is connected. And for the file provisioners, you can also do it backwards. So you can transfer files from the disk image to your host machine. And to do that, uh, this is an example where we are transferring the kernel from the disk image back to our output directory on source. So those are the important parts of the Packer script. So that's how, so this will automate the creation of the uh, disk image. So for this specific disk image, we are like changing a few things. As you saw, we had a few exit events on it. So that happens in the post installation script, which you can edit. So here we are just changing the sbin slash init to our own like own init file. We are adding the afterboot file and just doing small changes that we want to configure the system by. We are also building util m5 so that we can add exit events to our disk image. So now let's do a small exercise where we use the base disk image, like the base 24.04 disk image, and then create and extend it to have the gaps benchmark on it. And then we can run that gaps, run the BFS benchmark from that on gem5. So to do that, we go to materials, zero to using gem5, zero seven full system, and here in the directory x86 Ubuntu gaps. So this is like the starting version. The x86 Ubuntu packer file is the same as the one that I showed you right now. The build.sh will just build packer and initialize it. So this will run our packer script, and this script is just a blank post installation script. Here we'll install, like here we will get gaps. So let's start with what do we, what would we need to change to this base packer file to make it so that it doesn't install Ubuntu, but it uses our base image and extends it. So first we would need to add like a, a parameter here, which is called disk image, and set it to true. So what this tells uh, Packer is that instead of using a base ISO to install Ubuntu, we are using actually a disk image. So it will, it will not try to install Ubuntu on its own. So now we would need to update the ISO URL and the ISO uh, checksum. So let's go to the Gem5 Resources website. And here if we go to the 24.04 image in raw, here we can get the URL. So if you want to download it, we can directly just, from versions, we can directly just copy the wget command. and x86, move into gaps, and here we can just get our base disk image. We would need it locally. While this is downloading, let's make the other changes that we need. So after that, we would also need to update this checksum, which we will do after it's downloaded. So let's update the boot command. So now we don't need to install Ubuntu. So the new boot command would be the following one. So what does this do? We log in, gem5, the password is 12345. And then we re-enable the network. So in the disk image that we have on gem5, we have network disabled because it takes, like it just takes a longer time to actually boot if you're not using KVM and that we actually 
we are using like timing or atomic. So just to save time, we have disabled it. So here we just re-enable the network and just that's all we do. One thing to note here is this weight 30. This basically can differ from system to system. This is the time that you would need to wait before the boot command actually starts typing to the terminal. So this might change if the system is slower and you actually start typing before the terminal is loaded, it might cause issues. So one thing to note about that, uh, one thing to keep in mind. So let's get this boot command. here. Um, I'm going to change this to 180 because when I was testing it took about three minutes for everything to set up and terminal to load in. So just to be safe, I'm just going to do 180 seconds here. So yeah, so our disk image is downloaded. So we can just grab, we have to first unzip this disk image. So gzip minus t, x86 Ubuntu 24.04. And while that is going, uh, let, while it's unzipping, let's get gaps for our post installation script. So here, all we do is we just clone the main gaps repo, go into the gaps directory, and just make all the benchmarks that we need. So this will be run when like the system is booted, when Packer will SSH into our QEMU disk image, and then it will run these commands from our post installation script. So now let's get the path for our base disk image. So we'll replace the ISO URL with that local path. As we specified before, we are not, we are using a local disk image. And now let's get the new SHA-256 sum. So we can just type uh, SHA-256 sum with the path, and this will give us the new checksum that we need to replace ISO checks. So let's wait a few seconds for this. got the new ISO checksum. And now, because we don't need to transfer these files again, they are already on our base directory, we can just go ahead and remove all these. And this will be our new Packard file that will get a base disk image and extend it. This will not override your over the base image, it will create a new, it will copy the contents of the base image first and then add it on top of it. So you will not lose the original image while editing it. So now we can just, uh, we can just run the build.sh. Um, I'm going to use a Packer log info flag so that we can actually see in more detail how it's building. But essentially, it has started building the disk image. Oh, I misspelled the flag. It should be disk underscore image. And it has started. So for debugging purposes, you can use uh, 
VNC viewer to actually view the terminal and what exactly is going on. Uh, oh, one more error. Oh, this I forgot because we are not using the HTTP directory anymore. We don't need it. We can just completely remove this. And hopefully now this, <laughs> this should be good. But when this is going on, you will get a line saying that you can connect to VNC via this, uh, this address. So it has already started to boot. So we can here, as you can see, the line QM initialize VNC. So we can grab this. This will not work on Chrome. If you have a VNC viewer and you are using Chrome in code spaces, it will not allow you to connect to it. But if we connect, you can see what's going on in the system. So while, while this is going on, now let's configure our gem5 script to actually use this image while the image is building. Uh, first, are there any are there any questions about by creating or extending the disk image? Okay, so let's move on to updating our Gem5 scripts. So we are going to use the um, yeah. So first, we need to create like a local JSON file so that we can define our disk image. The links wouldn't work on this one, so let's open it in VS Code. So this is what the JSON file will look like for the disk image. We can just, so this just specifies the ID, the architecture, the URL here will specify the path, the local path, and then we'll need to specify the new MD5 sum. Everything else is just uh, information, like author, gem 5 versions, et cetera. So, So let's create a new file in full system and name it gem5 local gaps dot json and here we open it up and then have our disk image. Now we do have our disk image, so let's also create our workload. So for that we can use the blueprint of the Ubuntu boot workload and edit it. That would be the easiest way to get this workload's JSON file. So if we go to this and raw, we can copy this and paste it here. And let's now edit the important parts. So first, let's change the ID so we can say uh, Ubuntu 24.04 gaps boot here the description um, we can let it be we can edit it i'm not going to edit it right now let's change the disk image to point to our local disk image so we update the id here And that is the change you need. But let's say now you want to run, like you want to directly run a command. You don't want to use m term and log in and then type the BFS like run. So here you can add a new argument called read file contents. So we go with read file underscore contents. And here in a string, we'll type what do we want. So we'll be logged in to the user called gem5. So from then on, we can go to gaps slash BFS, and then we want to run it with the args minus g10 and minus n10. So this will automatically run this benchmark binary when we boot and log in. So our disk image is built.
as we can see in X5 Ubuntu, in the disk image Ubuntu 24-04 folder, you will have a disk image called X86 Ubuntu 24.04. So we can copy the path in our JSON file. We can paste it after this file colon dash dash. Um, oh, yeah, that is the different one. Here, we'll have to paste it here. Let's change this is zip to false because we have not zipped the file. And let's run, let's get the MD5 sum of our disk image. So when this is done, we can, you can directly plug in, uh, we can directly call this workload to run our gaps disk image. So let's grab this ID and go to the x86 fs gaps kvm run dot py file. Here Oh, this ID is wrong, so all we need to do is change the ID on line 51 to our gaps boot workload, and this should allow us to run the new disk image that we just built. So we can run it gem5, x86. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. gem5 x86 fs gaps kvm run.py. Oh, one thing we forgot was to use the JSON append flag to get our, to add our local JSON file as a data source. So gem5 resource underscore JSON append equal to, and then we can just use dot slash gem5 local gaps json gem5 <coughs> x86 fs gaps kvm run dot py while while this is going on uh, are there any questions about what we just did The simulation has started, so let's say we don't want to log in via M5 term. We will we will talk more about exit events in a while, but this run has finished. Am I? It's not getting. Let's actually let's go into the. M5 term and see what's happened. So let's change our last yield to false, and then add a yield true statement afterwards so that we can he, uh, we can exit whenever we want by throwing an M5 exit event. So now we run this, and then go into term. Once we get the port number that we want, it is generally the same across runs, so it should be three, four, five, six. And as we can see, like it read file, it is saying trying to run the read script via read file, and it runs the gaps fs benchmark. So here, this is not just for show. You have full access to the system. You can see what's in the disk image. You can run the benchmarks, any benchmark you want. So let's run BFS again with the same arguments, and this should work. So you have full access to the system when you, when you like, connect to it via M5 term. And as this image has exit events, if you remember, we just changed our exit event handler to yield false. 
So now what if you want to exit? Or what if you want to manually trigger an exit event? You can do that. You can use the gem5 bridge binary, which is also the M5 binary. We, are, we want to transition to calling it gem5 bridge. And then we can say exit. And this will exit our simulation. Uh, as you can see, the simulation got exited because we just threw manually threw an exit event. So in this way, you can like extend our base disk image or any base disk image you have, add benchmarks on it, and run, run them locally. Um, 